righty, I think I'm live. So welcome to the live stream. This is going to be a fun one. I am going to do my underground AI live. So if you've watched those last two underground AI videos, what I did was basically on the Future Tools website, I get something like 100 submissions a day. On a slow day, it's like maybe 50 submissions. On a busy day, it's 100 submissions. And to this day, I still click every single link that gets submitted and I go and test it myself. And well, I don't test every single one. I open the web page and make sure it's something that looks interesting, that hasn't been submitted 200 times already, that does something kind of unique over all the other tools that are already on this site. So I still click on every single link and at least look at it. And in a lot of cases, play around with the tools. And, you know, outside of the OpenAI, the Microsoft, the Anthropic, uh, Google, all of those big companies, you don't really hear about a lot of the smaller tools very often. So I started this series, Underground AI, where I pull anywhere from seven to 10 tools that I find interesting that nobody else is talking about. And I give them a go on recording, but I figured, It'd be really fun to do it live. That way, you know, I am not necessarily cherry picking any sort of outputs or things like that. You guys can actually give me prompts and say, hey, go and test that. Let's see here. I'm just uh, making sure everybody can hear me real quick. All right, cool. It does say we're live. So cool. So that is the idea with this. I'm going to go ahead and do another one of those underground AI episodes. I'm just going to do it live. So if a tool isn't working properly when I try to use it, you're going to see that. If a tool takes a really long time to process and give me back my response, then you're going to see that as well. This is all live. We have no idea what's going to happen. And uh, I've picked, I think, seven or eight tools that I'm going to play around with. And if this doesn't go too long, you can even suggest some tools here inside of uh, the chat and we can test some of those out as well. All right, I'm just going to peek at the comments real quick before we get going, make sure there is no issues going on. I've got three moderators helping me on this live stream. In the last uh, the last few live streams I've done, um, it was either just myself or only one moderator, uh, John, who's here, aka Craze in the Dark. Um, but today we got Craze in the Dark helping moderate, we got AP helping moderate, and then we have Willow aka let's see what was your username here on youtube travel travel something uh, <laughs> travel well sorry about that so we've got ap travel well and crazy in the dark here moderating so hopefully any sort of spam or bots or just people being rude will get booted pretty quickly they're also keeping an eye on the comments for me so if uh if there's a chat comment that i need to see they're gonna bring it to my attention so we're gonna get into some tools play around with some stuff and then you know, at the end, do some Q and A, test some tools that maybe you guys suggest on the stream. And uh, I'm done rambling. I'm already three minutes into this thing. Let's just get into playing around with some tools here. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my desktop. Now, this live stream is actually a sponsored live stream. Uh, Mind Studio, a, a company called UAI, has a tool called Mind Studio, and they reached out and asked if they could sponsor one of the live streams. And I said, absolutely. I've played with Mind Studio in the past. I've made videos about Mind Studio in the past. So I'm going to play around, demo what Mind Studio can do. And that's going to be the first tool that we're going to talk about. If Mind Studio is new to you, well, then this is an underground AI tool to you as well. So let's just go ahead and get into it. So, Mind Studio, what this tool does is it builds these automated workflows using. AI large language models. And what's really cool about this is you can build this like visual workflow. And like, let me scroll down here so you can see the little animation. You can build this little like drag and drop workflow and use multiple chatbots. So if you wanted to, you can have one step in this sequence use Claude, and then the next step in the sequence use GPT-4, and then the next step in the sequence use Llama-2 if you wanted to but it allows you to integrate with all sorts of different chat bots. So I'm gonna go ahead and log into my Mind Studio account and we're gonna build a workflow so I can give you an idea of one way that you can use it and then I'll show some other examples. We'll spend a few minutes talking about Mind Studio 
and then move on to some other underground AI tools. So the Mind Studio backend dashboard is pretty basic. I'm gonna click on this little plus up in the top left and we're gonna create a brand new AI. So I'll just go ahead and click create AI here. And they've got all sorts of pre-built templates for these workflows already. So things like an ad assistant, a blog post generator, internal job postings, HTML banner ads, telegram announcements, all sorts of really cool pre-built templates. But what I think is the coolest, easiest way to build an AI automation inside of Mind Studio is to let AI generate the initial prompt for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on generate prompt here and then click next down in the bottom. And basically I'm going to describe what I want the AI to do. So before I describe what I want the AI to do, I want to give you a little bit of context. So I've got a site that I've been working on over at news.futuretools.io. And essentially I built this website so that I can share news on my own domain. So if you visit Future Tools a lot, you've probably seen this AI news page where I curate news from all over the web. When I come across interesting AI news, I make sure it is shared on this page. Every once in a while, I come across a news article that is maybe paywalled um, and I pay for access to it, but it's hard for other people to see it without paying. Or I come across a Discord announcement that is essentially news. So I want to turn that Discord announcement into a news post. So I created my own news page. So any news that's hard to share from a different resource, or maybe I haven't seen a different resource share it yet, I've got my own place to share it and then it'll make it on this list here. That's why not every single piece of AI news is here. It's just the stuff that I couldn't find a better place to share it. So I just made my own post about it to share it. So that's the context I wanna give. And the reason I'm giving that context is because in Mind Studio, I wanna create a bot that will essentially look at another news article that already exists and then reword it for my news site while citing the source and sharing some key takeaways. So basically I can copy and paste a URL to a, another news article and it will write it for my website. That's one of the workflows that I'd like to try to build right now. So in order to do that, I'm gonna start by telling the AI exactly what I wanna do. If you've used custom GPTs inside of ChatGPT, this is kind of similar. You're giving it that initial context, that initial system prompt to run your AI workflow here. So to describe the behavior of your AI, Here's how I'm gonna explain it. I want to find existing news articles, share the URL to that article, and then have that article rewritten in a new voice along with key takeaways as well as citing its initial source. I know my grammar is horrible. That's a huge run on sentence. Under generation engine, we really only have the one. So you're just gonna leave that Then we'll click generate. And now basically what it's doing is it's writing the system prompt essentially for me. It wrote this prompt for news article assistant. Uh, the purpose of it is designed to locate existing news articles, share the URL link to the article, rewrite the article in a new voice, provide key takeaways from the article, always cite the initial source of the article. So it's it got a little bit of it wrong here. I don't want to locate existing news articles. I will share the news articles. So I'll just put, uh, let's see. I will share the UR link, URL link to the article and I'll just get rid of this first one so that it's clear. So parameters, the assistant must rewrite the article in a fresh, unique voice. Key takeaways should be concise and informative. The initial source of the article must be properly cited. Um, and then it added some additional traits of the bot here. So now we've got this system prompt, the AI workflow bot, whatever you wanna call it, knows what its 
purpose is. It knows what its role is now. Now I'm gonna move over to automations and you can see I've got this blank automation here. It's got start and it's got chat. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the chat. And now we're gonna build out this workflow of everything we want it to do. So I'm gonna click on this little dot here and I'm going to start by adding a user input. And this is where I'm going to essentially paste the URL of the article that I want to scrape and share a new version of. So I will click on here. Over in the right, we can see our user inputs. I'll add a little plus here, create a new user input. And then under type, we have a bunch of options, long text, short text, text choice, image choice, etc. I want to scrape a URL. Um, so we're gonna call this uh, variable original URL. And then for label text, we'll put original URL. We can see our little example over here. Don't really need to do anything else here. So now I can come back to my main workflow. I can either click on this tab up here or click on it on the left. And now we've got a user input with the original URL. All right. So now I want it to basically summarize that URL. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna click send a message, but it's not gonna send a message back to me. What it's gonna do is it's gonna create a message as a variable. So over here, it says response behavior. And under this, I'm gonna select assign to variable instead of display to user. If I did display to user, it would basically act like chat GPT and just give a response back to me. But I want it to actually save this scraped information here. So the variable that I'm gonna assign is, let's call it revised article. And then we can choose our model down here and you can see we have all of these models available. And this is one of the really cool things about Mind Studio is that I can have each step in my workflow use a different model. So if I want this first step to use Claude 3 Opus, I can do that. If I want the second step to use Gemini Pro, and then the third step to use GPT-4 Turbo, I can do that. All right, so now under send a message, I'm gonna basically write a prompt like I would do for chat GPT. So we've got our scraped input here. If you remember, we've got the variable is called original URL. So I'm gonna copy this variable, jump back to our flow. And then under message, I'm just gonna put these little brackets here and then paste in our variable that says original URL here. And this is going to basically be the scraped content. So original URL is going to be the sum of all the scraped content that it did in this first step. So I'm gonna put, here's the original article. And then I'm gonna give it a prompt. Here's the original article. And then we've got the original article essentially pasted in there. And then the prompt we're gonna give it is rewrite this article in a new voice, use simple language, keep it around 500 words. I don't want it to be crazy long articles. I just want it to kind of quickly summarize the main point of the article. It's gonna name it revised article. I'll show you what we're gonna do with that in a second. And then under model, lately I've been using Claude 3 Opus. I think it's the best one there is. And then for max token response, I'm just gonna max it out here. And now we've got that step. So if you're following along, you're gonna input a URL. It's going to scrape that URL. It is then going to rewrite the article in a new voice using simple language. And this rewritten article, it's gonna save in a variable called revised article. I'm gonna go ahead and copy our variable name because now I want it to give me a bulleted list of key takeaways. So I'm gonna send the message here. I'm gonna put new article. And then in these little brackets here, I'm gonna put our revised article. And then for my prompt, I'm gonna say, give me between three to five bullet points of the key 
takeaways from this article. Make them brief and to the point. And once again, instead of display to user, I'm gonna assign it as a variable. We'll call this one uh, key takeaways. And then if I wanted, I could change the model, but I like Opus again. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use Opus for each of these steps, max out the response tokens here. So now scrapes the URL, rewrites it, saves the rewritten version as a variable, reads the revised version, and then writes three to five bullet points. And, oh, sorry, I've moved my face, so hopefully you can see it now. <laughs> um, so there you go. So you can see over on the right here, I'm assigning the revised article to this key takeaways here. I'm gonna use Claude 3 Opus. And then uh, let's see here. So now we've got our revised article, our key takeaways. Now I want it to do one last step. I want it to generate a title for this news article. So I'm gonna do one more send a message here. Um, and this time I'm going to grab the original, art actually no, the revised article. I wanna grab that, I'm getting myself confused here. All right, I wanna grab the revised article here. So I'll copy that variable um, and then I'll do, here is the revised article. Actually, I need to put it in these little brackets here. There's the revised article. Please generate a simple to the point title for this article that includes the main point. All right. Uh, once again, assign a variable. We'll call this simply title and then model. I'm gonna use Opus. And now the final step is we can have it display everything it did back to us. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another send a message here. This time it is gonna display to the user. And the sender is going to be the system. And in this message, I'm gonna have it send us the title. So I'm gonna use a little bit of markdown here. If I put these two little hashtags here and then put title, it will use the markdown language for the title. So I'll put that. Our variable for title is just called title. So I'm gonna put our little brackets, do title. Then I wanna do key takeaways. So I'll put some markdown here, key takeaways. Our variable for that is just key takeaways. I'll add that there. And then we've got our revised article, which I can just copy this here. Go to send a message and put revised article, paste that. So now if you're following along to the workflow, put a URL in here, it's gonna scrape the URL. It's going to rewrite that same article as a new article. It's gonna make bullet points with key takeaways. It's going to then pick a title for it. And then it's going to send me a message back with title, key takeaways, and revised article, all in this one workflow. All I have to do now is find an article to test it with. So in order to do that, let me just go to uh, Feedly here, see if there's a, a news article I can share. Uh, let's just do this one here. Microsoft to invest 2.9 billion in AI cloud infrastructure in Japan. I can grab this URL here and we'll use this as our test article. Let's publish this one and then I'll open the published app and you can see now here's our published app that we just created. Uh, original URL, I'm gonna paste in this news article that we just grabbed and I'm gonna click next and I'm crossing my fingers that I did everything right because now it should scrape the article write a new version, give me some key takeaways, give me a title, and then display it all on the screen for me all at once. That was the end goal that I was trying to accomplish here. And uh, hopefully that's what I get. And while this is happening, I'm just kind of taking a peek over at the comments here. 
can you feed in multiple URLs and aggregate the URL? You have to do it one at a time. You can't, you know, list like a whole bunch of URLs. Um, there may be a workflow that you can set up and get creative with that will let you do that. But right now it's one URL at a time. And let's see, what else do you got? Uh, somebody is saying, is scraping considered fair use? Basically, if you think of like, like the news, right? One website will report on the news and then pretty much every other news website out there will then also report on the same news. I'm kind of doing the same thing. I'm citing my source. You can even see here's what it created for me. Uh, the title, Microsoft Invest 2.9 Billion in Japan's AI Future, Boosting Skills and Infrastructure. You can see it's not the same title. It's a brand new title that it just created. Here's the key takeaways. Microsoft is investing 2.9 billion in Japan. Investment focuses on enhancing cloud computing. Uh, Microsoft is collaborating with Japan's cabinet, secretariat, et cetera. And then it shares the source here. And then it actually duplicated the key takeaways. I'm not quite sure why it did that. Uh, but then we have the revised article down here. And this is a completely brand new version of the article that it just wrote for me. So I can literally copy this article, copy the key takeaways, and then grab the title that it generated, jump over to my WordPress blog here and create a brand new article for it. All of these images, if you can't tell, have all either been generated in Dolly or Midjourney as well. So even more AI to kind of keep this AI news website up to date. Very, very meta, I know. So that was my uh, AI voice refiner. Now there are other cool things that you can do inside of Mind Studio. Uh, I actually, was playing around with this one called Meeting Insight Summarizer. Let me click into this workflow real quick and just show it off to you. This one is designed for if you have a Zoom meeting, you can actually download the transcripts from the Zoom meeting, upload them into this tool here, and then it will actually send the takeaways that you need to know from that Zoom meeting over into Slack for you. So if we look at the automation here, uh, user input, it's asking for the transcript from the meeting. So you upload a file here um, and then it sends a message to generate the meeting summary from a transcript. And then what it does is from that, it takes that summary that it generates, sends it over to Zapier through a webhook. And then this Zapier webhook actually sends it off to Slack for you. So the message shows up in Slack. And then it also sends the user a message on the front end user interface to show you what message was also just sent to Slack. So that's a really cool workflow. Um, if you're not familiar with Zapier, really easy to create. You come in here, you click create a new Zap. For your trigger, you would essentially just set up your trigger as a webhook. And catch a hook. And then we skip the this step. And then under our, and then it gives us this URL here. So we'd copy this URL. And then you can see under our Zapier webhook, we would plug that URL in right here. And then this is the response that we got from this last step in the automation. It's passing that into Zapier. And then under action, you can have the action send it to wherever you want. Send it to a Google Sheet, an Evernote, Slack, anywhere Zapier will send a message. It can pass that message over. So. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. I really, really dig Mind Studio for creating these workflows and automations. One other thing that uh, uh, Mind Studio showed off to me was this new profiler feature. This is really cool because it allows you to essentially test different large language models against each other. Uh, so if I wanted to here, you can see I've got GPT-3 Turbo, but I can change this to Claude Opus. And then over here, I can change this one to uh, GPT-4 Turbo. And I can add a third profile if I want. And let's say this one we want, uh, let's do Gemini Pro as this third one here. And then let's see, done, done, done. And then if I give it a message here, like, write me a poem about AI and YouTube and hit enter, you'll see that Opus, GPT-4 Turbo, and Gemini Pro will all respond to that prompt. We can see which one's faster. 
we can see which one generates our a better response. So just another kind of cool, interesting feature inside of Mind Studio if you want to kind of compare different large language models against each other and actually see them play out in real time. So that is Mind Studio. Again, I want to thank Mind Studio for sponsoring this live stream. I did put a link down in the description. It, I believe there's a coupon code on there. I think it's Friends 100 gets you your first month free if you want to jump into Mind Studio and play around with it. So thank you so much to Mind Studio for sponsoring this and uh, letting me play around with the tool. They did provide me with fifty dollars in credits to play around with, show it off, share it for you, and uh, you can put, create some pretty cool workflows. I mean, I'm kind of thinking of fairly linear workflows here, but there's some really interesting, like outside the box workflows that you could probably think of, uh, especially when you start connecting it up with Zapier and, and things like that. All right. So that's Mind Studio. I've got about seven or eight other tools I want to play around with, but really quickly before I do, let me just kind of check in with the chat over here, make sure there's nothing I'm, meeting, uh, I'm missing here. All right, fix the face cam issue. Thanks, John, for pointing that out. A um, couple comments asking, blocking settings in the bottom right. Yep, uh, Mind Studio says, I believe you set Opus to temp one. That's too high for Claude three Opus. It should be 0.2 to 0.2 for this okay so cool somebody in mind studio is actually in the comments helping me <laughs> there we go um so let me get back into how do i get out of my work oh it's up here um so yeah what he's saying is under the temperature i should set it at 0.2 to 0.4 so you could set your temperature there 0.2 0.4 and then let's see if I publish that. I would go ahead and do that with all of my Opus integrations here. So that would be the proper way to set up Opus. Make sure your temperature is set to 0.2 to 0.4. And that is straight from the team at Mind Studio who's hanging out in the chat with us right now. Uh, Mind Studio also says it's one month free for the pro plan. There are usage fees associated with the workflow, uh, but you get $5 in usage as well. So thank you again to Mind Studio. Let's see here. What else should I show off in Mind Studio before playing around with some other tools? Kind of clicking around, seeing if there's anything that I forgot to talk about that I wanted to talk about here. You may have watched my old video where I played around and made a Mr. Beast bot. So you can check that video out um, as well, where I deep dive into Mind Studio. Cool. Well, thank you for, uh, thank you again to Mind Studio for sponsoring it. Thanks to Mind Studio for hanging out on this live stream and actually providing some additional help and context and tips for people. Um, so, really, really appreciate that. And you'll definitely be hearing more about Mind Studio from me. I play with it a lot and I will be showing off more workflows in the future in future videos as well. Alrighty. Let me close out of some stuff here. And I just realized I wasn't showing my screen again. I'm really bad at doing that on live streams where I start talking about something and I forget that I'm not sharing my screen. Um, and thank you to Jungle Inc. Crypto for the donation. I really appreciate that. All right, I'm gonna leave it on my screen for a little while instead of going to my face cam because I have a tendency of not switching it back properly. So the next tool that I wanna talk about on Underground AI is one that I personally haven't heard of very much of, but I was talking to Kip Bodner, who is the CMO of uh, HubSpot, and he asked me if I've played around with this tool, and I said, well, I've heard of it, I've listed it on future tools, but I've never actually clicked into it and played around with it yet. And that tool is called Recraft AI. So let me pull Recraft AI up. Again, this is one I haven't really played with, but it's definitely popular because it's got 400,000 plus users and over 50 million AI generated uh, graphics. So a lot of people know about it. It's just one I haven't really played with yet. So I want to jump in, test this one out and see how it does. I'm gonna go ahead and log in here. I'm gonna actually pull it off my screen real quick while I log in. Once I'm logged in, I will pull it back.
Ready. All right, so going through onboarding, I'll use it for personal. What do you plan to create? Um, all of it? I don't know. Um, vector, image vectorization. Yes. All of the above. Have you ever used AI design tools before? I'll go ahead and say yes quite often. How did you hear about ReCraft? I heard it from a podcast. I was on the Marketing Against the Grain podcast when Kip Bodner shared it with me. All right, so we've got a little tutorial. Describe what you expect to see, generate, and browse. All right, let's ReCraft. <laughs> ByCloud says, does Matt play Fortnite? I have played Fortnite. My kids play Fortnite more than I do, though. <laughs> I will not be playing Fortnite on this stream. I'm curious, have you guys played with ReCraft before? Uh, let me know in the comments if you have used ReCraft. Also, if you have any prompts you want me to test, feel free to type them in and we will test those prompts. Um, so one of the things about ReCraft and the thing that uh, Kip brought it up to me for was ReCraft will actually generate vectors. So it'll create vector illustrations, which if you're not familiar with vectors, you typically open them in a tool like Adobe Illustrator, but it makes the image like infinitely scalable. So if you're trying to blow something up and put it on a giant sign, a vector is what you're gonna want because you can scale it to whatever size you need to. A lot of people haven't used uh, ReCraft yet, so cool. All right, so we've got some different styles over here. We've got some vector options. I'm really interested in the vectors because vectors are great for logos and again, things like signs and blowing stuff up really big. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a, let's just do a vector art to start here. And I'm gonna do my go-to, a wolf howling at the moon. Not howling at your mom. Let's see, modify current image. Let's just go ahead and click recraft. Oh, let's look at our settings here. Level of detail, we've got primitive all the way up to extreme. Let's kind of put it midway. And then we've got some negative prompts that we can add here. Let's go ahead and click recraft. And that should generate a vector for us here. Let's see, what are you guys saying here? <laughs> I do the channel to keep the basilisk away. <laughs> uh, vector AI are not good enough. Uh, let's see, pickle Rick in a Superman costume with Super Saiyan hair. I don't know if I said that word right. <laughs> well, there's my wolf howling at the moon. That's pretty good, actually. Let's see. Okay, so this generated two versions. And this almost feels like a Figma board. And so far, I haven't paid for anything. This is, I don't know if it's a free trial or if this tool is just free to use. We'll, we'll explore that here in a second. But I can scale this up. And notice because it's a vector, it maintains its quality as I scale it up. So that's pretty cool. All right, so I wanna try this other prompt that was just given, mostly because Rick and Morty is, you know, it's trademark. And I wanna know if uh, it's gonna actually pull in Pickle Rick. Let's go ahead and do cartoon. Let's see if that makes a difference here. And let's do recraft. If it actually knows what Pickle Rick is, I will be kind of surprised. Let's see. Brian Mooney says, a pug dressed as a doctor. Okay. Okay. I'll try that one next. Let's see. AP says, does chat thing... Actually, <laughs> that's better than I thought it would be. I don't think it got the Rick and Morty Pickle Rick reference, but it got a sort of humanized, humanoid pickle with a Superman costume. And then I don't think it quite got the hair right. But here's the other variation. Actually better than I was expecting. Um, the S is a little bit better on this one than this one. All right, so what was the pug prompt here? A pug drop dressed as a doctor. I'll go ahead and plug this in here. 
then I don't know what style to do. Um, let's do Vector Kawaii. Try that. Let's see, somebody wants me to generate a burger. <laughs> Pickle Rick, it's Pickle Rick. Uh, let's see. Okay, there's your pug dressed as a doctor. It's a little cartoony. Let's see if we do a different style here. Maybe a non-vector? Or do they all, are they all vectors? Not quite sure. Let's try psychedelic. Let's try a psychedelic pug dressed as a doctor. <laughs> Not Pickle Rick. It's Larry from Veggie Tales. Yeah, that's probably closer, actually. <laughs> Alrighty. So let's see a person meditating in the jungle. We'll try that. All right. So this one is the doctor pug here. A really, really fancy doctor pug. But yeah, it's, um, don't believe this one's a vector. Let me see. Paste it in here. Doesn't tell me the file type. Export. Oh, I can export it as a PNG or JPEG, but it's not a vector. All right, let's take a look at this. Um, I want to, oh wait, there was one more I'm going to try here. Person meditating over a jungle all right that's the last one i'm going to try and then i'm going to look into it a little bit more figure out price all that kind of stuff i'm going to do vector again because i really think the vector is where this one shines if we're making a jpeg or png i mean everything else does that really well also not many of these tools do a really good job at vectors so let's go ahead and do a person meditating over a jungle and let's do it in a flat 2.0 style See what that generates it's really interesting because it does just kind of create this giant big muff feeling board where i can just add more images i kept on recrafting the same image and then i realized i can just create more images next to it instead of recrafting the same image so uh yeah there's a slight learning curve but not too bad let's see not a svg you can click and make it a vector somebody said Oh, vectorize. Yeah. So even if you do generate as a JPEG or PNG, you can turn it into a vector. So thanks for pointing that out, mindful mini pods. All right. So AP, let's see. Somebody is asking, will it actually make vector graphics or just a vector looking graphic? Will it scale? So this one supposedly is a vector. So export as, yeah, we actually get vector. We can actually download it as an SVG file if we want. This one, it made it as a JPEG or PNG, but we can actually click vectorize and convert it into a vector. Let's see. So I don't know how long it takes, but it's working on making this one a vector. So let's just, I'll just wait for that for a second. It does people well in photorealism like Donald Trump or Biden, and it actually does it instead of saying no. Well, that's good to know. All right, so just turn this into a vector, and now I can export it as a vector file. Very cool. All right, I, I, I got to try one more image. Uh, now I got to try, like, um, Trump or Biden just because it was suggested, and it said it was really good with people. So photorealism. How do I get to photorealism? Photorealism. All right, so we'll select that, and let's just do um, Joe Biden on stage with an American flag. Sure. I wanna see its realism, and then we'll actually dive in and look at some of the other stuff <laughs> about this tool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's not bad. It's um, not the best Joe Biden I've ever seen, but it's not horrible, I mean, it's okay. It's okay. I, I, I feel like mid journey might still do a better job with it, but yeah, not too bad. All right. Now I really want to sort of dig in a little bit here. <laughs> All right. La last one, last one. 
um, <laughs> John is telling me to do J Joe Biden and Donald Trump hugging. Let's see what we get. All right. That's it. That's, that really is the last one. That is the last one. Uh, you know what? You know what? I don't know what's going on with Biden's face there. <laughs> and he's also got an extra finger. But that's pretty common with these AI image generators still. That one is actually not bad. That one, you know, you can tell who those are, are supposed to be. All right. All right. Okay. So let's look at the subscription real quick here. I'm just curious. So for free, you can get commercial license, but the images are public for 20 bucks a month. Commercial license images are private and will not appear in the community gallery. You get faster image generation and a limited time offer or that's if you pay yearly or if you pay monthly, it's 25 bucks a month. So it looks like there's no real limits and they're available for commercial use. So pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Um, all right. So let me just look at my notes here. Make sure I covered everything I want to cover. I covered how much it costs. Um, I think so far what the value in this tool is, is really for making the vectors both in generating a vector straight up or actually vectorizing a non-vector image. So that seems to be the best use case for this. If you're looking for realism, I feel like mid journey is probably still a little bit better at realism. Um, but this one's, this one's really, really good at the vector stuff. So just turn that into a vector for me. So if you guys wanna see, you know, Trump and Biden much larger on the screen. There you go. I know you all wanted that. But yeah, that one's pretty cool, especially since you can create vectors seemingly completely for free. I'm not sure if there's any limits. I don't see any sort of credit system or anything like that. Uh, I like this sort of Figma board style, this giant, I guess, like infinite whiteboard where you can just keep on generating images. That's really, really cool. So give this tool a thumbs up. I like it. Let's see, what do we got here? All right, so I'm gonna move on to the next tool here. Otherwise I can definitely spend 30 minutes on every tool and we'll be going until the middle of the night. So I'm gonna move on to the next one that I wanted to play around with. And this one's actually open source. Uh, this one was by request on Twitter. Somebody asked if there was a open source tool that will take a still image of a person and make the lips move. So there is this tool DID. I've played around with it in past videos. If you've been around the AI space for a little bit, you've probably already seen it. It's a tool where you can upload a, you know, a single 2D image and it will actually make the mouth move to an audio. So you can type in some text, give it a, uh, assign a voice to it and that person will speak in that voice, or you can upload an audio file and it will sync up the voice to the audio file that you gave it. And somebody was saying, hey, is there a free open source alternative to DID? And there is, it's called Sad Talker. And you can actually install this locally on your computer, run it on your own GPU if you want. But I did find a hugging face space that also does this. So this is, Kind of the same idea as DID. I feel like DID does it a little bit better. There's a little bit more motion in the head and a little bit more blinking. It feels a little bit better, but this essentially does the same thing. There's a handful of examples down here. Um, this one's my favorite because uh, this is the face they gave, but this is the audio input. The holidays are a time of celebrating with loved ones, enjoying the festivities and muddling through Wisconsin's cold. And so when you put the two together, you get this video. The holidays are a time of celebrating with loved ones, enjoying the festivities and muddling through Wisconsin's cold. But for many, this year has been. And so it, the voice and the face don't really match up that well, but you get the idea of what it can do. Uh, there's some other examples here. Let's try this one. Here's the input audio. Über unsere Homepage steht Ihnen unser Mandantenportal zur sicheren und rechtsverbindlichen Kommunikation. And then this is the image they gave and then this is the output. 
Über unsere Homepage steht Ihnen unser Mandantenportal zur sicheren und rechtsverbindlichen Kommunikation zur Verfügung. So, if I wanted, I can actually remove this image. Let me see if I have an image on my hard drive somewhere that I can just toss in here real quick. What do I got? What do I got? <laughs> I won't use that one. I was going to use an image of someone else, but I don't know if they would appreciate it. Uh, so let me go to my images here headshots i'll go ahead and use i'll use this image which is like my profile picture for everything and i'll just use this same audio actually you know what can i do a type where do i type i thought this one had an option to type in some text and it will actually the text but I'm not seeing it here so maybe I do have to just select some existing reference audio I'm just gonna pick some existing audio just to keep it quick and replace it with my head here and then I'll click generate and it's too busy right now keep trying all right so there you go <laughs> that's yeah it won't generate right now because the hugging face space is too busy I could duplicate the space but if you've ever duplicated a space on hugging face Sometimes it takes a good five minutes just to get the space duplicated. It's kind of a bummer. It's too busy. Of course, the moment I'm doing a live stream, this one's too busy for me to use. But I guess, you know, the idea was to show you what it does. And <laughs> if you know what DID does, uh, which is short for de-identification, by the way, in case you're wondering why they call it DID, um, then... Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Let's see, what is AP saying over here? All right, so he's telling me about one called Any Portrait Official, which is actually, he says, more state of the art than even Sad Talker. All right, so this is definitely the first time I've seen this one, because AP's pointing it out to me right now in the inside of the Discord. I've got a little Discord going with the other moderators here. Here, I'll type it in. It's d-id.com for anybody that's looking for the one that I was talking about. So let's look at some of the examples here. Pull up this one. So here's the reference audio. Here's the reference image. Let's go ahead and generate. This is going to take about 28 seconds here. Let's see what we get. Let's see, please make videos. Favorite AI tools, LearnX AI, Romo AI. Cool, just kind of keeping an eye on the comments. All right, so here's what it generated. It's only one second. Bonjour. I why it only generated Bonjour. one second. Did I skip a step here? Length, I gotta crank the length down here. Let's try this again. And I should probably turn off my Slack notifications while I'm on a live stream. All right, so now we're trying to generate, hopefully I can get it to generate a little bit longer of a video. And then next I'll try uploading my face. Let's see what we get. And then I'll move on to the next tool that I had on the list after this one. Anytime now. So the next one, oh, oh there we go. It is going to be, so this, now it generated three seconds. So. If you're looking for a way to take a 2D image and add audio over it, probably the simplest way to do it, if you're willing to pay or try the free trial, is this DID.com. It does exactly what I'm doing, but it's 
faster and you're using their servers. Uh, but there's some, there are open source alternatives. You can install these locally if you want. You've got Sad Talker and you've got any portrait official. Again, if you want to use Sad Talker and it's loading really slow, just duplicate the space. It might cost you like 25 cents or something to use it, but uh, you can do it that way. Yeah, it's still busy right now. So there's some alternatives to DID if you want to make that 2D talking animation. All right, so the next one I wanted to talk about, somebody, you know, Suno has been all the rage lately. It makes really, really good AI music. You plug in a prompt and then it turns that prompt into a song with lyrics, background music, everything, right? Well, somebody told me we should check out Sonato.ai, basically claiming that it was sort of a competitor to Suno and that uh, it makes really, really good songs. From what I can tell, it doesn't actually do lyrics though. It just makes beats. So I'm curious if anybody here has played around with Sonato.ai, um, cause if you have, share any tips you have with me inside of the comments as we test it out here. Uh, but let's go ahead and select popular and listen to, you know, one of the popular songs that it generated. Let's do top of all time though. Change the world featuring AI Katy Perry. So, okay, maybe it does do vocals. Let's see. Oh, it does have vocals. Hey, we had our doubts, but now we're stronger, and that's okay. Hey, let's tell the world that we're in this together. And I know that brighter days are on their way. I know, I know it fills your heart moving forward, hand in Inter not bad at all. Oh, I stop it though. Oh, down here. Okay. Um, it's, I didn't know that this did actual lyrics. Um, yeah, somebody said no lyrics. This one, it, it did play the lyrics on this one. It says featuring AI Katy Perry. So let's see, Conquer Us All. Let's see if this one has lyrics. It does. If I was just completely wrong about this. In the shadows of the digital dawn Where the code lives and repawn Our creation now the master's role Silicon Interesting. All right, let's go ahead and try to make a song here. I'm just going to call this a song. I mean, I wouldn't say that this is better than what Suno 3.0 generates. Um, but it's pretty good. Let's see, describe your song in a few words. <laughs> I always go to the same stuff. It makes it easier to compare, right? So I like to go early 2000s, pop, punk, anthem. Um, let's just do it. They actually put like an actual artist name. Let's do a Blink 182 song about AI and YouTube. What does that do? So we have some custom options here. Write a minute and a half of lyrics, rhythm control strength, rhythm assist. All right. I'm going to turn, I don't really care about all this advanced stuff. Let's just see what it does if we just generate something right out of the box. Let's see here. It's comparable to Suno in quality. <laughs> Miles feels like dancing. <laughs> Sweet. Let's see. Uh, let's see what it, it says. Is waiting for an available GPU. So I have no idea how long this is actually going to take. And let's see what do we got. So AI Andy is here. What's up, AI Andy? Good to see you. AI Andy's also got a YouTube channel and is on the Twitters and X's. Definitely a good follow in the AI space. So it seems like from the comments, people have uh, very mixed reviews of the songs. Uh, some say awful, some say not bad. 
Um, all right. This song features energetic electric guitars and fast paced drumming, characteristic of a Blink 182's pop rock style. Mark Hoppus and Matt Skiba's vocals. Matt Skiba's not in the band anymore, but cool. Let's see what it sounds like. Oh, did it generate three variations? I mean, it's not horrible. There's a little bit of like distortion on the voice that sounds kind of unnatural that I don't feel like I get as much with Suno. Suno, the lyrics sound a little bit cleaner. I would say instrumentally, they're pretty com comparable, but the lyrics, I feel like Suno still does it a little bit better. It did sound like the voice though. The voice was fairly close. It just sounded like electronic, like it was overly processed or has distortion on it or something like that. But yeah, I do think Suno is better. There's a new one that uh, that people are starting to talk about as well uh, called Udio, but nobody has access to it yet. There's been a few little like uh, leaks on Twitter where people have made songs with this Udio tool and the people that have played with it have said that it's better than Suno 3, but I don't have access yet. So that'll probably be on a future video where we actually play around with that one. And then I'm actually curious, is there any sort of like pricing or information? So I guess it's just free. I don't see any options to pay. I don't see, there, there's nothing here that makes me think that we have to pay. So I guess it's just, open for anybody to use. So you can find this one over at sonato.ai. Sonato? I think it's Sonato, but I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right or not. Alrighty, so... No Logic David is here. What's up? Good to see you, good to see you. Um, all right, so I'm gonna jump over to the next tool that I had in mind. And this one is like one of the OG video tools. And uh, one of our moderators on this call, AP, is actually on the team who makes this tool. And he told me that if we talk about this tool today, he'll hook people up on this call with a discount. So everybody, obviously Sora, uh, the Sora video came out. Everybody saw it and went, holy crap, AI video is going crazy. We've seen all the videos from, you know, Animate Diff, which essentially looks like uh kind of like an existing video and then somebody put like a cartoon skin over it kind of thing that's sort of what you tend to see with that style of video the forum makes these like crazy cool psychedelic like spinny artsy videos so if you haven't played with the forum yet you got to play with it it's uh, honestly it's like the og <laughs> Uh, original AI video thing long before Sora, long before people were playing with Animate Diff, um, long before Pika and Runway, we were playing with the form. In fact, if you go back on this channel like a year ago, me and Human, who are actually who's actually here in the chat right now as well, did a live stream where we did a deep dive into how to use the forum. Well, now they've made the forum studio, which is a front end user interface that just makes it so much easier to generate videos with the forum. So with the forum, uh, we'll, we'll take a quick look at the pricing first. So for eight bucks, you get 20 credits. And I believe there was some sort of coupon code that AP was sharing where if you want to get a, 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 a discount, AP can go ahead and share it in the, in the chat if, if you want to share that. I am drawing a blank on what it is right now. But let's go ahead and create an animation. I'll click on animate. And then we can do a prompt. Let's do a wolf howling at the moon. Let's do psychedelic. I don't know how to, I never know how to spell that word. Psychedelic, colorful, um, beautiful art. I'm just gonna stuff a bunch of stuff in there. Prompt style, we've got a whole bunch of options for prompt style here. Let's do 
I want to do like a crazy psychedelic one. Do yeah, we got psychedelic as an option, so perfect. Motion preset, you've got all sorts of options like zoom in, zoom out, evolve, all sorts of stuff, but I'm just going to do random and see what it generates. And for aspect ratio, let's do 169. And I'm going to go ahead and click animate and see what it gives us. So AP is saying the promo code is future tools, future tools, all one word. <laughs> and uh, it gets you three bucks off the 20 credit pack. So if you want to check this out for only five bucks for 20 credits, use the code future tools. I had planned on talking about this tool anyway, by the way, this, I'm not talking about it just because AP and human are on this call. I think AP and human are on this call because they knew I was going to end up talking about it. Uh, but I do appreciate them creating a coupon. They did that like last minute, right before we jumped on the live stream. They're like, Oh, you're going to talk about us. Here's a coupon code. You can shout out. So I really, really appreciate them for doing that. Uh, but I've been using the forum for a while. In fact, Let's see, if you go to my YouTube account and you go to the live streams, the very first live stream I ever did was a year ago. And this was me and human and somebody from Run Diffusion all showing off how to use Deforum. And it's two hours and 38 minutes of pure Deforum. So if you like what Deforum does, you can go check out that live stream as well and get a super deep dive on what this is capable of. Ooh, look at that. So it's still processing here, but I'm already liking <laughs> what this is looking like. This is really awesome for like music videos and things like this. Um, in fact, let me, I'm not gonna actually play the song because YouTube will cut any sort of monetization, but um, Linkin Park actually put out a music video recently and most of the video was generated with the forum. So this lost video here is mostly using the forum to create this. Let's see, is it gonna play the audio? Okay, don't play the audio. There we go. <laughs> so you can see if you watch through this video, a lot of what you're seeing in these animations is using this the forum style animation. And so here's the video that I just generated where we've got this psychedelic, colorful wolf that starts off howling at the moon. Like, can't you see that being used in the background of a music video? I mean, it obviously it reminds me of like this Linkin Park video that you're seeing here. But this one's, you know, slightly more psychedelic. So... AP human, is there anything else that I should point out about the forum? You guys are the pros, you're the experts, you're the guys that are working on it. So I want to make sure if there's some really, really cool feature about this that I need to show off, let me know so I can actually do it. But like this makes really, I mean, it's obviously not going for realism, right? You're not going to get that Sora guy walking on the moon, like <laughs> with a spaceship in the background, it all looks realistic. Or, you know, the woman looking out the subway and you can see the reflections on the glass. That's not what the forum is going to generate. It's going to generate these sort of images that all sort of mold and merge into each other to create this crazy trippy video here. All right. So AP is saying we got to check out the explore page. So let's click on explore here. And all right. These are, I guess, all of the generations that have been getting generated by other people recently. So we can actually filter it down to just like the style. So if I just want to see uh, psychedelic videos, I can filter down to just psychedelic videos and see what other people have generated that fall under that kind of psychedelic category. So if there's a certain style you're looking for, you can come to the explore page, click on style here under filters. Let's look at all the ones that are 3D model style. You can see what this style kind of, ooh, that one's really cool. I like that dragon there. Let's see, what's the other filter? So motion preset, let me set that to all. And then you can see what these different motion presets look like too. Like what's spacewalk? So spacewalk is like, it looks like it kind of 
tilts back and forth as it zooms in. I guess that's what uh, the spacewalk motion preset does. Let's see. Are there any other presets that I should check out? Any other filters that would look that we should? Uh... All right. So Taze says psychedelia is easy. Let's see something more stable. All right. Give me a prompt. Uh, shoot me over a prompt you'd like to see me do, and we'll do it. Uh, someone wants to see the slow motion tick enabled. This one's still processing up, so the video is getting longer and longer every time I look at it. I just love the colors in it. Like the colors are kind of badass. So let's go ahead and use the same prompt, but let's do slow motion this time and in the prompt style i'll do photographic and then i'll leave this on random and then i'll set this as slow motion and let's go ahead and animate that let's see what others what other suggestions here uh, is there an API for Deforum? Zerobot is asking. Well, I believe Deform is available as open source, um, but Human would be the one to answer that. So Human, if you can jump in, let them know. Uh, somebody's asking about an API. You'd be the one to know. Well, you an AP. Let's see, High Fresnel Porcelain. I'm just kind of trying to copy and paste some prompts over here to test. Oh, so you, high Fresno porcelain wolf. Okay, okay. Let's see here. Let's see, can I generate two at the same time? Will it actually? Is there like a style should I go for this one they're like a porcelain style let's do do hyper realism on this one and then motion preset There. Classic stop motion. Human was suggesting trying the stop motion. I don't know if I should try one or two. Let's do two because two sounds newer. We'll animate that one. So here's our wolf howling at the moon using the photographic prompt style and slow motion. You can see it sort of evolves in sort of more slow motion now. Human says they're going to be rolling out the API this week. So there you go. If you want to use the API for this, you'll probably have it soon. And then, all right, so it's generating our stop motion here. So we'll see how that looks. And then after a couple of these, I will move on to the next tool. But just a reminder, if you use the coupon code future tools, the guys over at Deforum are going to give you 20 credits for three bucks off. Oh, try an image prompt. Okay, good call, good call. I will do an image prompt and then that will be the last test on this one. I do like the slow-mo, the slow-mo looks uh, cool. Not very photographic, that's true. Um, I mean, it's using basically, I believe it's using stable diffusion images. So, I mean, it'll, it'll be as photographic as, you can get it probably as photographic as stable diffusion will get, but then, of course, the images are all sort of merging and sort of blending together. So, I mean, how realistic are you actually going to get with that being the case?
Brian Mooney, your default prompt, Wolf Howling at the Moon, Matt Vid Pro is a lemon thing. Um, and then <laughs> Brian's is a pug dressed up as a doctor. <laughs> I mean, it's good to kind of pick a prompt that you use every time you're testing a new tool. That way you have some sort of benchmark to test against. So that's what I do here. All right, so is this one? Hi, Fresno Porcelain Wolf Howling at the Moon, Hyper Realism, Classic Stop Motion. It's still process. I, th I like the fact that you can actually start to watch the video while it's actually processing too. Like the video is going to get longer and longer and longer. You can see it's processing, but it's actually showing us like where the video is at right now. That's actually looking pretty cool too. All right. So the last one I want to try is I want to try an image prompt. So I'll flip the image prompt on here. And then let's see, I will pull in, I'll just pull in my profile pick here, start with that one. And then for prompt, a white man with a black beard turning into a pirate. Let's see what it does. Prompt style, let's do neon punk because it's kind of got that look to it already motion preset um i don't know i really like just leaving it on random because it does really cool stuff all right so image influence you've got a slider here so you can make it more influenced by the text or more influenced by the image um let's leave it in the middle and just kind of see what we get i'm gonna leave it at 15 seconds just so it doesn't take as long to generate and let's see what we get here I'll animate this one. So our wolf howling at the moon, our photographic one, almost unprocessing, but you can see how cool <laughs> that one's gotten. And then here's our high Fresno porcelain wolf howling at the moon, hyper realism with classic stop motion. And we're still waiting on this one. And let me see what do we what do we got over here in the comments. David says with recraft, he takes it back. It is a real vector. He just tried it and it works. Needs a little tweaking, but it's definitely usable. Very cool. Um, people are talking about not safe for work stuff. For the most part, you're not gonna be able to do much not safe for work stuff on most of these um you know SaaS SaaS platforms like the software as a service most of them don't like you doing not safe for work but if you uh install stuff locally on your own computer like if you run your own um large language model using a tool like uh LM Studio or Jan you can do not safe for work with your large language models if you're doing AI art you can use stable diffusion generate whatever you want uh one of the online platforms that does still let you make whatever you want completely uncensored is Leonardo. Um, Leonardo actually does use stable diffusion underneath the hood, but they have their own sort of uh, fine tuned models and their own workflows under the hood to make it work. But they still do allow, allow not safe for work if that's what you're into. What is high Fresno? That's a good question. I don't know. I just copied and pasted it. I didn't want to sound like an idiot saying I don't know what that word means. Um, but let me look it up. Uh, distance between the screen. Fresno equation. Honestly, I don't know. I just, uh, <laughs> I copied it and pasted it from the chat. So, um, yeah, I don't know. The person who suggested that prompt might be able to give a better explanation. <laughs> Scanner darkly vibes. Yeah, for sure. Not, uh, not safe for work, Wolf. I don't know what that would look like. All right, so, ooh, that's uh, that was a creepy pose to land on. Here, let me move my head to this side here. I'm already creeped out. I think it turned my uh, my little shoulder badge things into earrings. Nice. So it starts with this image and then you can see it just kind of like morphs to different images. 
eventually i guess i'll probably look like a pirate that's probably why it started to do like the tattoos and the earrings and stuff because apparently that's what pirates have obviously and then um yeah that's true i cannot make not safe for work stuff on stream so if you're asking me to generate not safe for work stuff i'm not going to do it i'll tell you where you can generate it go to leonardo and install stable diffusion on your own computer they'll let you do it all day long but no, not going to do it on a live stream. Um, all right, so my animations, they're telling me to peek in there as well. So you can see all the stuff that I generated. You can see the first time I used it, guess what I generated? <laughs> so that is Deforum Studio. Makes these really cool, you know, psychedelic animations. Thank you so much to... The Deforum crew, Human and AP, they are, again, hanging on this call. They said if you use the code Future Tools, you get $3 off the $20 pack if you want to play around with this. But I love Deforum. I use it all the time. If you've watched my past videos where I uh, made, like, music videos and stuff, they pretty much always included Deforum videos in there as well. All righty. I'm a little behind schedule. I have three other tools I wanted to talk about. Uh, two of them should be pretty quick, though. Um, this next one is not one of the quicker ones, though. This is just one that I recently came across. In fact, I think AP was the one who told me to check this one out as well. It is called Viggle.ai. So Viggle AI is a tool where you basically upload a image and then a video of someone doing some sort of motion, and then it will actually make that character, right? So here's, if you're looking at this little video that it's showing on the screen right now, you can see that uh, we've got a initial image that they uploaded, then they uploaded a TikTok dancer, someone dancing, and it applied the dance moves from this video to this character, and then you can see that's what that final animation looked like. So, Pretty cool. I have not actually tried this myself yet. So um, I'm trying this for the first time on this stream and hopefully it doesn't completely screw up. But um, this one is one that you have to do in Discord. So the people that I'm talking to in Discord right now that are helping me moderate, I won't see your messages for a second because I'm going to pull up Viggle over here on Discord. Uh, so this is the Viggle Discord. And one of the things that I've been having fun doing is literally just scrolling through some of the other animations people have done. Because some of them are pretty dang cool. Um, and some of them are also really hilarious. Uh, let me see if I can find like a really good one. Oh, you can give it a text prompt too. I forgot to mention that. You can upload a single image, give it a text prompt, and it will make a video based on the text prompt as well. So you can see this one that I'm looking at on the screen right now. The prompt was break dancing, and then they uploaded this image, and it turned it into this guy break dancing here. Um, here's one that the prompt was dollar sign bobbin. <laughs> they uploaded this image of like a pigeon with a gold chain, and this is what it made. So that's the type of thing Viggle does. Now, practical use cases, I guess if you're making like some, uh, if you're making a game and you want like an NPC that's dancing or something, you've got that. If you're making a video and you want to have some animated characters moving around doing dances in the videos, this seems like it'd be really fun for content creation to make some animated characters. Um, but I haven't tested it, so I actually need to learn how to do it real quick. Uh, let's see, channel guide, no, that's not. Tools, FAQs. I'm not quite sure how to prompt it yet. Um, maybe if I just come here and type a, well, create a video. All right, cool. So if I type slash, we can see we've got animate, image, motion prompt, background, fine tune. Let's go ahead and do that. So for animation, let's upload an image. Let me see, what do I got here? What kind of... <laughs> All right. So here's an image of me. 
it's like a full body shot. It's like one of the few full body shots I have on my computer. So I use that as the image um, for the motion prompt. Let's do uh, disco dancing. And then uh, fine tune. I'll put that as on. I don't know if I need it on or not. Let's go ahead and just generate that. All right, so background, it's asking which one I want to do. Let's just do a white background. All right, now I should be able to prompt it. And scroll all the way down. And there we go. So I'm currently in queue. I have no idea how long this takes. It does sound like a handful of people here have used Viggle before. Um, so, yeah, somebody's asking for the link. If you just go to Viggle.ai and then click on Join the Beta, that'll open up the Discord. So that's the way to get to the Discord. Viggle.ai, click Join the Beta. It'll throw you right in there. Let's see. Oh, uh, Twitch emote. Yep, that can work for a Twitch emote as well. Uh, what else do we got? What else do we got? While I'm waiting for it to generate, I'm just kind of reading the comments here. Is it using animate anyone under the hood? I'm actually not sure. There's not a ton of documentation from what I can tell. And quite honestly, even if they were, they probably wouldn't tell us. So let's see. What else, what else, what else? <laughs> so we're at a time where we have a thousand or so AI tools. How soon till we have an AI that can just do insert prompt here? Probably pretty soon. I really think we're gonna have an AI tool that's connected to all the other AI tools. Like in the same way you use ChatGPT right now and you have um, Dolly just built into ChatGPT. You tell it, make me an image of this thing, it'll go make you that image using Dolly. I think eventually we'll probably have some sort of chat, large language model user interface that knows about all the various tools that are available. You enter a prompt and it goes and uses the proper tool. That was kind of the initial intention with ChatGPT. They originally rolled out plugins to do that kind of thing. Then they rolled back plugins and then they did GP, custom GPTs, which now can kind of do that sort of thing with APIs and that's where a lot of these companies are trying to get to a single platform where you enter a prompt and then it goes off and uses the proper tool to get you what you needed. That's where this is all headed. If you asked me, I, that, that'd be my best guess of where it's all headed. All right. So it hasn't generated yet. And you take a TikTok dancer and an image of yourself and make you TikTok dance. Theoretically, you could. I mean, it still looks a little cartoony. Like if we look back at some of these other ones, it doesn't look super realistic. Like the, the animation still looks like a little bit, I don't know, something a little weird about the animation still. <laughs> but you can get pretty close. Let's see. So the motion prompt on this was bombastic. Maybe I'll just try that same prompt later. All right. How long does this thing take? Anybody used Viggle before? How long does it normally take? Let's see. JJ3D says it does also animate lips. Uh, but more updates, it will improve it. Um, vid server is asking if I'm headed to NAB in Vegas. No, I'm not going to be at NAB this um, this month, um, I was at too many events. I went to, <laughs> I went to CES and then I was at social media marketing world. And then I was at South by Southwest. And then I was at, uh, NVIDIA's GTC conference and all of those events, all four of those were in like a six, uh, eight week window, something like that. They were all really close together. So I was doing a lot of traveling and during that traveling, I really, really slowed down on YouTube video production. So now I'm kind of like, all right, I'm taking a break from traveling, at least for the month of April. <laughs> and um, that way I can kind of get back on top of my YouTube schedule. Let's see. Anyone else going to watch the Google Cloud Next event? 
I'm gonna be I'm gonna be watching the recording of it later, but I'm not gonna watch it live. Uh, JJ 3D says Matt do the mix in Viggle. So what does that mean? So slash mix mix a character image into a motion of video. Okay, so maybe I did the wrong thing. Okay, so I needed animated video though, and I don't know if I have a dancing video. Let me see what I. Give me a sec, guys. I'm going to look on my computer and see if I have a video of somebody dancing. Because I did make some videos of people dancing not too long ago. Come on. Um, wish I just had a bunch of random videos of people dancing on my computer, but I don't, fortunately. I don't think I've got any, like, TikTok-style dance videos that I can show off. I should have prepped better for this part. Oh, you want me to just go dance live? I don't think I can record a video of me dancing while also streaming at the same time and feed that in. That might be a little bit complex. <laughs> Who does have random dancing videos on their computer? I think you'd be surprised, honestly. I think you'd be surprised. Um, do you need a green screen dance video? From the examples I saw, no, they weren't green screen videos. Um, actually, you know what? Maybe I have some stock video. I do have a folder with stock video in it. Let me see what's in there. And at the computer, no. Bear with me for a second here. I'm just looking through some of my stock video footage. Oh, I don't seem to have any videos of somebody dancing, unfortunately. I'm not too scared to dance, dang it. I just don't think I could dance and record a video of me dancing and feed it into Discord all while simultaneously live streaming. All right, well, this seems to be a sort of slow process. So my prompt that I generated way up here, let's see, how long ago did I ask for the prompt? So 1220, it's now 1228, so eight minutes later, and it hasn't actually processed yet. I don't know how long this takes to process. Um, I have a feeling adding my own video and image will take just as long. Um, oh, you want me to do it on my phone? Yeah. No, I lied. I just, I don't want to dance on camera. Sorry. Let's see. Adobe has a website to do Unreal Engine animations. Oh, there's a WinZip, uh, annoying pop-up. Um, let me see. I, I guess that might be one way to do it. Um. Let me pull open, um, what's it called? What's it called? Adobe, what's the animation tool? Mixamo, that's it. Thank you, JJ3D. Mixamo, that was what I was looking for. Let me log in off screen here. You guys are being very patient with me. See, that's the difference between live streams and actually putting out recorded videos is all of this stuff where I'm just logging in and waiting for things to happen, I can edit out and make the videos move fast. When I'm live streaming, I gotta make everybody wait. 
All right, here's Mixamo. So let's do. Um, I'll just do this cap. I never know how to say this word. Cap, capiora, cap, capiora. Uh, sorry, sorry for butchering that. What? What format do I download it in, though? Yeah, I don't actually know what file format to download this in to actually pull it in as a video. Did my other prompt ever actually... Oh, some of these animations might be NSFW, so I'm gonna scroll past them quickly. <laughs> Capoeira? Is that how it's pronounced? Capiora? Capoeira? Capoeira. Capoeira. <laughs> I love everybody's teaching me how to pronounce this. I think on this one, I'm just going to uh, move on. I think you guys get the idea of what Viggle does. I just don't want to spend 20 minutes, um, you know, waiting for it to generate something for me. And I have a feeling even if I upload an image with a video, I can see that a lot of people are putting prompts in here and none of them are actually coming out. But we know what it does. We can look at some more examples here just for a second while we're in here. Might as well peek at what some of the other people have created. Like here's one of this animated character. Here's, I guess, like a yoga pose. And then here's the blended version. Uh, let's, I just want to, since I can't get it to actually generate in time for me, I just want to peek at some of the ones that other people have generated. I kind of like some of the more like cartoony ones. Like here's a input image. And the prompt was just dancing and this wasn't generated. So what I'll do is once this prompt is done, I'll take it and uh, throw the finalized video on my Instagram and <laughs> that way I actually have a place to post it where you can see it because uh, I don't think it's actually going to finish generating the video while I'm still on stream here. It's just, it's too long. I think there's too many people. It's gotten popular, so it's getting bogged down. But uh, let's take a peek at just like two more and then I'll move on. The other two tools that I wanted to show off will actually, I think, be a lot quicker to to um, to play around with. Character prompt. Oh, looks like you can also just generate straight up images if you want to. I'm a, I'm so afraid of like showing some not safe for work stuff and then YouTube getting mad at me. So here's an image of just like a woman in a dress. Funny because it tried to put her in pants. It just turned the dress into like a uh, romper looking thing, I guess. <laughs> Pretty impressive though, honestly. Like, it... I don't know. You can see like a little bit of blurriness behind the video like as she moves around but if that like blurriness wasn't there and you just kind of saw this video on an instagram reel or something you probably just pass by it not even realizing it's ai honestly joe <laughs> joe fear watch your scrolling matt by the way joe fear if you haven't listened to the hustle and flow chart podcast i used to co-host the hustle and flow chart podcast with joe fear um, and then when I really, really got hardcore about AI and started to focus on AI, I stepped away from the Hustle and Flowchart podcast, but Joe still hosts it. It's still an amazing podcast. Go check it out. He has some great guests. Um, I'll, I pop on the show and, and Joe and I chat AI and YouTube and nerd out, you know, I don't know, once a month or so on the app on that show. So check it out. Hustle and Flowchart. 
You'll dig it. Let me, I'm gonna double check one last time. Yep, I got nothing, I got nothing. It's, all these prompts are just too slow. So you get the idea of what Viggle does. It's pretty cool. Um, you know, maybe maybe there'll be some like local version of it that we can install on our own computer. If we do, maybe I'll do a tutorial about that in the future. Or, you know, maybe they'll pull it out of Discord and um, give us some sort of front end user face, user interface, but with more GPUs. Who knows? I have no idea when this is going to come back to me. So let's just go ahead and move along. Let's see. Next up, uh, this one, <laughs> this is actually a really cool, useful tool if you're trying to um, sort of stay in the know with a certain topic. But the funny thing is, I added this tool to Future Tools. I've played around with it a whole bunch. I've created my own digest with it. And then it took me like three days of using it before I realized, wait a second, this isn't even using AI. But it's still a really cool, helpful tool. So I'm going to show it off anyway, because I have it on my list of tools to use. So I'll go ahead and log in here. And basically what this does is it creates a sort of single page to get all the information that you need about like any specific topic. So for example, I'll show you the digest that I've already made. Um, it's, it creates a new digest for me every day at 9 a.m. It pulls in X posts. Right now, Rowan Chung has a few X posts. Um, Rowan is probably one of the most looped in people when it comes to AI news. He runs a newsletter called The Rundown. So I follow Rowan just because I try to keep my finger on the pulse of the news. And if there's anything that I ever miss, usually Rowan catches it. So I usually find it through Rowan if I didn't find it myself. I like to follow the AI Explained YouTube channel. I think as far as AI YouTube channels go, um, his is probably uh, the, one of the most like highest signal to noise ratio. He puts out content only when it seems like there's really something important to talk about. And I really appreciate that about him. Matthew Berman, same thing. Matthew tends to put out a lot more content around like open source and the latest large language models and benchmarking large language models. So I really like watching his content as well. David Shapiro is another one. So whenever any of these people post new YouTube videos, it shows up in this digest. I also follow artificial intelligence on Reddit. So it pulls in some of the more popular posts for the day from that subreddit, stable diffusion subreddit, open AI subreddit, mid journey subreddit. And that's my digest. So in a quick glance, I can see if there's any news that maybe I missed based on uh, some posts on X, some YouTube channels that I follow, some subreddits, things like that. And it's super easy to create. Uh, you just come up here, create digest. It's free, by the way, too. I forgot to mention, it's free. Uh, you've got all of these options here. You can add Reddit. Over here, you pick the subreddit. So, for example, I can put the artificial intelligence subreddit, and it's a pull in as many or as few articles from that subreddit as you want. You could sh uh, decide how it shows the layout and then click save. And now this is the first thing in your digest. Let's say I wanna add a YouTube channel. I wanna make sure I know whenever a new video comes out on let's say the Matt Wolf channel. I can add my six most recent videos and show those up in the digest as well. And so you just kind of build out this like single resource that kind of keeps you in the loop with Twitter, with YouTube, with Reddit, with all of those places. I'm gonna pull up in my Discord, make sure the my moderators aren't actually trying to get my attention and I'm missing it. So give me a second here. Okie dokie. Cool. All good there. So that is um that is called use digest. I remember I mentioned the next couple tools are going to be really, really quick to show off. This one's pretty self-explanatory. And again, it was a tool that somebody submitted to future tools. I played around with it, thought it was really cool. Went, Hey, I'm actually going to use this tool. And then realized later on that it actually isn't an AI tool at all, but it is a helpful, useful tool. All right, let me check the comments here. Shapiro is higher noise to signal, but I also follow. Uh, I think, you know, I think David Shapiro is really, really good at 
sort of sharing his thought process around where things are going to go. So he'll see a piece of news and then really go in depth on like what this could mean, how this could play out over several years. And I love that. I love his sort of uh, theorizing and his future looking like, where am I going to take all of where, where's all this headed? That's what I love about David Shapiro's content. Um, let's see. You should join Rowan's rundown university. Cool. I'll look into that. I don't know much about it yet. Uh, let's see. Wolf Berman Roth and Shapiro are pretty much all I watch on YouTube. Nice. All, all good channels. Um, let's see. LLM toasters coming soon. Cool. Alrighty. So that's digest. You can find it over at usedigest.com right now. It's free. Um, it does say there's going to be a newsletter feature coming soon. I actually don't know what the newsletter feature is going to be. Um, it doesn't really have any details, but I've just been using the digest feature and it actually emails me the digest anyway. So this digest that I just showed you with Rowan's posts and these YouTube videos and all of these Reddit posts, it sent me an email this morning at nine o'clock with all that stuff in it. So it does send you an email. And then there was one other tool that I wanted to talk about. And then after this tool, I will, um, we could do any sort of Q and A and just hang out and see, see where we go from there. Only planning on hanging out for about 20 more minutes. So this one should be a quick tool and then we'll, you know, just chat for like 15 minutes or so. Uh, so on Twitter, let's see here. On Twitter, this um, Emisthwar man asked if I can try out Orange AI. I wasn't really familiar with Orange AI, so I looked it up and it looks right up my alley. So Orange AI... Basically what it does is it looks at all of your YouTube comments and gives you like a sentiment analysis, right? It says, want to read all your YouTube comments in one minute? Try Orange AI. And then uh, it looks like I can just put a YouTube video link in here, click see viewer feedback, and it'll give me like an overview of what everybody thinks about that YouTube channel. Again, you can see why this is going to be a pretty quick... Um, I don't really need to spend a whole lot of time talking about this tool, but this is a tool that I need because I do kind of read the comments, but also I get bent out of shape by the comments. Like, you know, there could be 90 positive comments on my YouTube video and the 10 negative comments, the 10% of negative comments, like really get into my head and bug the crap out of me. So um, I tend to do more of a skimming of comments than I do reading every single comment. But you can see uh, I've got there, there was a ton of AI news this week. That's my most recent video. I'll just grab the link for this one and I will plug it into Orange AI here and see what the comments say about that video. Oops, put it in the wrong place. I'll put it here, not in the email box. All right, so preparing your insights may take up to 67 seconds. Um, let's see. Ryan says he might be thinking of the wrong Shapiro. Possibly. Yeah, David Shapiro is, um, he likes to wear his Star Trek shirt on his videos. I really enjoy his channel. A lot of it is more like um, sort of thinking through things than it is sort of breaking down the news. All right, so here we go. This is what Orange AI said about my most recent video. Uh, audience liked, uh, continue covering AI news and developments, explore more on ethical considerations and regulations around AI, consider creating more content on AI's impact on jobs and society, highlight advancements in AI voice generation technologies, expand on AI applications in entertainment and creative industries. So apparently 20% of the comments had like one of these kind of notes around it. Um, audience requests, 60% apparently. Address concerns about AI and job displacement with more in-depth analysis. Provide tutorials or guides on how viewers can engage with AI technologies. Discuss the implications of AI in various sectors beyond tech like healthcare and education. Offer insights into how companies are scaling AI and the infrastructure behind it. Clarify misconceptions around AI developments and their practical applications. 
So those are the requests. And then where I can have some improvement, address skepticism around AI advancements, respond to concerns about AI ethics and potential misuse, clarify the role of big tech companies in the AI landscape, engage with the audience's concerns about AI replacing human creativity, and provide balanced viewpoints on AI's impact on traditional jobs. So it pulled in all of that information from me just feeding it one YouTube video. Um, you know, I try to address as much of this stuff as possible already, but it's always great to kind of get the overview of what we're seeing in the comments over on YouTube. Um, let's see. Let's see. K Donchev, Matt, I follow your channel, but I don't remember you talking about Invoke AI. I don't believe I've talked about it on the channel. I've talked about it over on the Future Tools website and shared it, uh, but I don't believe I've actually made a video about it yet. So this orange AI seems really, really cool, but there's not a whole lot more for me to explore. There's, it's free. I don't see any way to, uh, to pay. It does say interested in unlimited access. So maybe you enter your email and then it sends you a way to pay, but I don't know. I feel like it did what it needed to do <laughs> with the free version right out of the box. So I don't know what I would use unlimited access for, um, unless maybe you can only, can I only give it like one video a day. Let's see. Let me copy last week's video here just to see what happens. Maybe I maybe it's limiting me and I don't realize it's limiting me. Looks like it's just generating a new sort of sentiment analysis here. XCVII says I cannot get Orange AI to work. Well, that's a bummer. This is my first time actually even testing it. I literally have never tried it before this live stream, so Luckily, I got it working on the first try, but this was this was my first attempt at even using it. Let's see. Concerns about replacing human creativity. All right, so it looks like it just generated a uh, you know another analysis for that other video. The funny thing is, if you read it, a lot of it looks like it's kind of the same stuff. So I, I get kind of very similar comments on every video. Explore the potential of AI in healthcare, especially decentralizing and improving access to medical. Discuss ethical implications. Clarify capabilities and limitations. Um, concern, address concerns about the clickbait nature of video titles and thumbnails. Uh, I don't try to clickbait, but when I do videos that cover 30 topics, it's really hard to find a single title that uncovers all those. And it's really annoying because if I put like, hey, here's all the latest AI news, and that's the title, the video doesn't get a lot of views. If I say, there was a lot of crazy AI news this week, and just add like an extra adjective or two, the video gets like four times as many views. So it's annoying that I got to play into that game a little bit, but it kind of is what it is. That's that's the YouTube game, unfortunately. Uh, let's see, Brian, final request. Please consider 2x a week news, even if half the content each time. Um, yeah, I might. I, had to, I, I do one AI news video a week, and then I try to do two other other videos like an underground AI type video and then like a tutorial every week. I always try to mix it up a little bit. The the reason being the AI news videos, they tend to get a lot of views uh, like right when I publish them. So like an AI news video has a lifespan of like a week, right? I put out an AI news video by the following Friday, that AI news is kind of old news and there's a new AI news video dropping. So last week's AI news video just kind of stops getting views. Um, but then when I make tutorials or when I make videos like nine underground AI tools that you haven't heard of, those videos kind of start off slow. They don't get a ton of views right when I release them. But then over, you know, six weeks, two months, three months, those videos ramp up. Those are the evergreen videos that attract more people to my channel. So I'm kind of always trying to do that balance of here's the timely stuff of what you need to know right now. Here's the sort of longer term stuff, tutorials, tools, things that you might find helpful if you're actually trying to implement and use AI in your business. And I'm trying to always, you know, keep that scale in balance. But yeah, these are all the tools that I wanted to talk about today. I'm actually gonna pull up Mind Studio on the screen again, since they're the sponsor of the video, might as well have them on the screen. Uh, again, you can use the coupon code FRIENDS100 to get the, a free month of the pro plan. So 
So that's Friends 100 Mind Studio. Thank you for sponsoring the video. If you jumped in late to this live stream, make sure you check out the beginning of the video where I do a super deep dive uh, into Mind Studio and build some automations with it. So check that out if you haven't already. But I'm gonna hang out for about 10 more minutes and uh, just kind of watch the comments and see what you guys are saying and you know, ask me anything. If there's any other uh, websites or tools you think I should kind of take a peek at and give my thoughts on, happy to do that. Let's just hang out for 10 more minutes and then we'll wrap this up and uh, call it a day. Got to open up my Discord so I can make sure that I can see when John is trying to talk to me. Let's see, he's asking if we should run some polls. We can run a poll. What should we poll? <laughs> At least you're not making the videos blank shocked the entire industry. Yeah. Um, I do notice a lot of videos have that title. They, everything shocks everybody all of the time. I try to, I try to go a little bit less clickbaity than that, but I also try to think of a name that's like an overarching, all-encompassing name for that video. Let's see, what do you got? What do you got? Do you need another anchor? I can make your extra video teamwork. Possibly, maybe we'll go down that route in the future. That would be fun. I definitely want to do some more videos that I like co-host with other people. I actually thought it would be really fun to do a live stream like this, where I'm just talking about cool tools and testing them in real time and seeing what they can do. Um, but then bringing on like a guest host, bringing on someone like Matthew, uh, Matthew Berman or David Shapiro or Wes Roth or one of these other guys that's making AI YouTube videos. And we kind of nerd out together talking about the tool and, um, you know, maybe even do like a tier list. Like you see all the gamer channels do and talk about, you know, pick, 20 AI tools and place them on a tier list and do some collabs. I think it'd be really funny, fun to do like collaborative live streams in the future. I got to figure out how to do the tech behind it. Uh, we did it once with the forum, so I'll figure it out again, but um, that would be really fun. Let's see your 10 best AI tools. You never heard of style of videos are the best. Yeah. I'm not planning on sacrificing those. Uh, those are called underground AI. This live stream was supposed to be a live version of that underground AI, but you know, the polished video versions that I put on YouTube obviously have a lot of editing where <laughs> a lot of people don't know this, but when I make YouTube videos and let's say like the 10 AI tools you've never heard of, one of the underground AI videos, that video might be 30 minutes when I put it on YouTube, but I probably spent two hours recording it. I probably did like exactly what I did here where I flip on the camera talk for two hours, try the different tools, experiment with them. And then me and my editor go back through, cut out tools that sucked that I don't even think are worth showing off, um, cut out tools that didn't work, things like that. And then I also cut out all of the pauses, all of the, okay, this is taking forever to render. So I'll just sort of jump to the final rendered version. I do a lot of editing to get those videos down to like 20 or 30 minutes because I can ramble with the best of them. I can just keep on talking and talking, which you can probably tell by my live streams. Uh, let's see, just kind of reviewing questions. I think uh, John, AKA Crazy in the Dark, is gonna put a poll in there. Um, we're gonna find out who should I collab with first between Ben Shapiro, Matt Vid Pro, Matthew Berman, or AI Explained. That'd be kind of a fun poll, see what you guys think. Paul Harding says, I would love to see you, Matt Vidpro and Matthew Berman. Yep. I actually have never met Berman in person. I'm in San Diego. He's in LA though. Um, we'd planned to meet for coffee once and didn't actually make it happen. I have met Matt Vidpro. We were both at uh, the same event up in San Jose a couple weeks ago. Let's see. Which tool do you use to create your thumbnails? So I've actually done two or three videos about that. So I actually did a live stream here um called let's create ai art and thumbnails back in august of last year i break down my thumbnail strategy there and then i also did a video let's see can i search where's my search i don't know how to search my videos uh there's another video if you just search out like thumbnails um where i basically gave a tutorial but the short answer is i use a combination of tools uh we'll generate a, a well, two short answers. 
Shortest answer, most of the times now, John, aka Craze in the Dark, who's helping me moderate this live stream, creates the thumbnails for me now. So he's making 95% of the thumbnails that we use on the YouTube channel. Every once in a while, I'll play around and make one myself still, but most of them are John. Uh, before John came on board and helped me with thumbnails, the way I did it was I either used Mid Journey or Dolly 3 to generate kind of a overarching concept of the image with a person in the image. And then I use Stable Diffusion and like a face swap on Stable Diffusion to merge my face onto the image. So I'll start with Mid Journey, Dolly 3, create the image, pull it into Stable Diffusion and swap my face on it. Um, all righty. So the poll is actually blocking my chat window. Hopefully if I close the poll, it doesn't actually like stop the poll. Can't tell. Let's see. Have you tried X minus pro yet? That is not one I've heard of. X minus pro. This is not one I've played around with. Um, so I am going to save this one and look back at it later. I just closed the poll window. Hopefully it didn't actually shut down the poll. I was just kind of trying to close it. Uh, let's see. Let's do a LM Coliseum between Wolf and Berman. <laughs> When it comes to language models, Berman is much smarter than I am. He's tested all of the open source models and knows which ones to use for what scenarios. I'm still pretty basic. I still use Claude and ChatGPT most of the time. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, cool. John told me it didn't shut down. That's good. Is there an API that allows realistic characters for the AI answers? Um, probably, uh, hey Jen probably has an API to do that kind of thing. What is the best offline AI program, Olama? So offline AI program, there's two things, right? You, you have your sort of front end user interface, which is where you're going to run the large language model and actually see the chat. Uh, for that, you have tools like LM studio and Jan are two of them that come to mind real quick. Uh, those will actually run whatever large language model you need them to. And then you also have the actual large language models, which are things like Llama 2, uh, Mixtral 8x7b, um, you know, you've got Orca, you've got, there, there's all sorts of open source models that you can play around with. Uh, Google's Gemma, I think, is another one that you can play around with. So you need your user interface to actually interact with whatever bot you decide to use. And then you need to download the actual large language model weights um, as well. As far as like which one's the best, I still really like using the Mixtral 8x7b. That's the one that I tend to get the best results out of. But I guess different large language models are better for different tasks. That really is more like the Matthew Berman area. <laughs> Those are the types of videos he makes is like what large language model that's open source is best for this task. Matt Berman's great at that stuff. Uh, Internet Kite says, Olivio, I'm assuming you're talking about Olivio Sirikis. Uh He's a buddy of mine. I talk to him in DMs all the time. I haven't actually met in person, but he'd be another one to do a good collab on. Let's see. <laughs> don't meet for coffee, meet for beer, and we'll show up. <laughs> I don't really drink beer. I will do wine, though. I'll drink red wine, but I don't really drink beer. Let's see. There's so many questions I'm having a hard time keeping up. All right, um, what's the best image animator tools? Depends on how you're trying to animate them. Um, I really like uh, Pika and Runway. They both do a really good job at animating images. Uh, interchangeable, sometimes Runway gives me better res uh, results. Sometimes Pika gives me better results, but you can upload an image, give it a prompt, and it will try to animate that image for you. Uh, so play around with one of those. I think both of them have free trial options. Both, I believe, are paid, but you can test them for free. Let's see. The AI breakdown, Nathaniel Whitmore. Now, that's a name I don't actually know yet. Let me, 
I'm going to open up a tab so I can make sure I look them up after this call. Oh, Craze is saying the poll is close. Save Matt Vid Pro. Uh, Woxo, W O X O, is a video generator. I have looked at that one in the past. I don't remember much about it. And I just caused them to spend money by clicking on their ad. Uh, boost your YouTube TikTok views. Cool. I'll have to look into this one more. I have heard of it, but I haven't actually played around with it. But it looks like we've got a way to play with it for free. All right, I'm going to start wrapping up here, but I do want to quickly check the comments, make sure that I address anything that needs to be addressed. Um, so much, so much, so much. Is Brian says, is there a tool that allows a photo of a person or a pet to be used and AI art created around it? Um, there are, uh, I wish AP was still on the call. He had to drop off, but he's, he's got a real, uh, quick <laughs> memory for the kinds of tools that do that sort of thing. I don't know about animals specifically, but for, um, be used as AI art created around it. You could use that Viggle tool that we were just talking about too, right? To create like an animation of the character and then make a green screen and then put a video behind it. That might be a way to go. Uh, there are a handful of tools that do what you're talking about. I've just drawn a blank on, on where to point you right now. Also look into Runway. Runway has a large suite of AI video tools that do all sorts of interesting stuff. Um, log in real quick i know i said i was going to wrap up two minutes ago but i want to i just want to clear out all the questions and comments that have come in all right so here's runway you can see there's all sorts of tools in here you've got generate videos edit videos for edit videos you can remove background you could do in painting where you you know remove a person from the the background scene detection extract depth motion tracking all sorts of stuff so what you're looking to do, most likely, you can do it with a combination of tools inside of Runway. Um, let's see, vid server. Oh wait, uh, I missed one here. Martin, any real-time voice cloning tool that allows me to clone the voice of someone I have some hours of recording of? Uh, yes, Eleven Labs. Eleven Labs does that great. Uh, I would highly recommend checking that out. You can upload like a minute of somebody's voice and create a clone of it if you want. Use it ethically though. Use it ethically. Don't go and try to fake people. Um, vid server would love to use AI to translate your vids to other languages for bigger audiences to enjoy any interest. I am interested in that, but I'm talking with a company right now. Uh, so in YouTube, they actually have a new feature where you can turn on dubbing and you can change the language and it'll dub over in a new language. And if you use that dubbing with something like 11 labs, it'll actually be my voice, but in that new language. However, YouTube hasn't turned that feature on for me yet. So I haven't been able to add the AI dubbing yet, but it is something I'm planning on doing on my own channel is actually going back through, taking all of the um, audio from one of my existing videos, translating it to like three or four different languages, and then putting it as a dub feature so you can listen in other languages. So it is something I'm working on. I'm just waiting for YouTube to roll out that feature in my account. So it should be happening fairly soon. Uh, let's see. You should increase your stream video bit rate on OBS. Okay, I'll look into that for the next stream. I don't do OBS very often, so I will have to play around with some of that. Uh, Thank you, thank you. When Grok, though, I'm not sure I understand the question. We have Grok AI with G-R-O-K uh, inside of Twitter. Uh, G-R-O-Q, which is like the inference engine, the, the, the chip that makes uh, large language models run a lot faster. We have access to that already right now. Dora AI, somebody asked if I've played with that. I have played with it. Um, I believe that's like a website builder, right? Dora. Yeah, I have played with this a little bit. 
um, you basically enter a prompt and it creates like a whole website for you. So maybe one I'll go into in another um, underground AI, play around with this one some more. Okay, Waldo saying, giving me some tips on increasing quality. So I'll look into that for the next one for sure. Um, somebody's asking about the 4080 winner results. I do have the results. So the thing about the RTX 4080 was I went to the that that contest. I went to NVIDIA and said, hey, can I get that list of everybody who submitted and joined the uh, NVIDIA GTC event so I can pick a winner? And they said, due to privacy uh, reasons, we need to pick the winner for you. We can't just give you the list. And I was like, okay, that's annoying because I kind of wanted to like pick it on stream, right? I wanted to get on stream and throw them all into a spreadsheet and then use some sort of randomizer tool and pick a name at random so you can see that I wasn't trying to like fake or give it to like one of my best friends or something like that. Um, but they said, no, I can't give you that whole list. So we'll pick the winner for you. So a winner has been picked. I do have a name and email. I was going to announce it in the discord uh, later today, but I'll also announce it here just in case they're on the stream. But the winner is Thomas Mueller. Uh, uh, chances are Thomas is not on this stream, but I will be emailing Thomas. They did give me Thomas's email to hit him up and Make, let him know that he won, but that is the winner. I'm also going to announce it in the Discord. I was going to announce it in next Friday's news video as well. Um, but that's what's going on with that. I wasn't able to actually do like a live drawing. NVIDIA picked for me. All right. All righty. Any other questions? Um, John, let me know in the Discord if there's anything else that you've seen that you think I should be responding to a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff has come in. So I'm just kind of trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to keep up with all the comments and figure out where to go next. Um, any interesting AI audio units yet? Uh, I'm not quite sure uh, what that means. Audio units. I, I'm not, uh, Gov Corp watch. I'm not sure what you mean by audio units. So if you want to clarify, let me know. And the comments have already gotten away from me again. Uh, they turned on AB testing for Mr. Beast. I do have AB testing in my YouTube account. We use AB testing with every video we put out. Somebody's asking about the dubbing I was talking about. It'll dub, but not lip sync. At least not in the beginning. I could do the lip sync with Hey Jen, but then it would just be a completely new video. Um, so not yet. That might be a feature like YouTube rolls out in the future, though. And I think that's about everything. Cool. Well, I really, really appreciate everybody hanging out. And I just realized I was showing off some stuff on the screen and didn't actually switch back to my camera again. I'm really, really dumb about that. Uh, I did show off a couple things a minute ago. Like I showed off Runway has all these like edit video features. So the person that was asking about like, you know, changing video backgrounds and stuff, check out Runway. Somebody brought up Dora. I did pull up Dora on my screen, but wasn't showing my screen because I'm a dum dum. And so this is what the Dora <laughs> AI website builder looks like. Luckily, I didn't do that for the majority of the stream. I only did that for the last like five minutes. And that's it. I think we've answered pretty much all of the stuff. There's some other questions that have popped in that I don't necessarily know how to answer. Um, quantum photonics. Not sure of the reference there. Uh, la 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 la. So, okay, I'm done. I, I've been rambling. I'm kind of trying to keep up with the comments, but there, there's too many there that <laughs> I'm missing a whole bunch. But I really, really appreciate you tuning into this live stream. Hopefully you learned about some new tools that you haven't seen yet. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. I'm planning on doing more of these. Maybe my next time we'll have a guest host. In fact, who won the poll? I didn't even see the poll results. 
Um, but maybe the next time I do one of these underground AI lives, I will have a guest host and me and that guest host could talk crap about the tools or talk about why we like the tools so much. Um, maybe what would even be really fun is me and a guest try to like stump the other host and try to present a tool that the other one hasn't seen yet. Now that would be really cool. Like if I can bring Matt Vidpro or Matthew Berman on and they can actually like stump me with a tool that I haven't seen yet and I can try to stump them with a tool that they haven't seen yet, that would be really, really fun. So we might do something like that where we try to find tools that we know the other ones haven't seen yet. But that's it. That's, that's my live stream. Hopefully uh, you got some stuff out of it. Thank you once again to Mind Studio for sponsoring this video. Uh, you can learn about Mind Studio by heading over to uai.ai. I did put a link below in the description. If you click the link in the description, well then UAI will know that you found it as a result of this live stream. Uh, so ideally click the link in the description so they know you came from me. But uh, thanks again to them. Use the code FRIENDS100 to get a free month of it and start building some cool automated workflows with Mind Studio. And I'm done. I went for two hours and 11 minutes. That's 11 minutes longer than I was planning. Thank you so much to everybody jumping on. Uh, David Barona, PD, P Dragon Labs, JJ3D, Angel Wall, Wallflower, uh, John, AKA Craze, AI Primary, Paul Harding, Keith Swan, Gov Corp Watch, Miles Prower. You guys are awesome. Bobby Streeter, the third, Paul Harding. Okay. All right. I'm not going to keep on reading off names. <laughs> I really appreciate you guys. I just never know how to land the plane. I just don't know how to end these things. So appreciate you all. Thanks for hanging out. Let's do this again. And uh, I'll have another video coming out later this week with some more fun, cool AI stuff and then a news video on Friday. So appreciate you all. Thanks again. See you later.